Okay, can you see this video? A uh, PowerPoint? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, sometimes it comes out big and sometimes it comes out small and it doesn't let me fix it. I don't know why. Um, are the slides moving? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, so we are going to talk about dental hand instruments. And uh, there's a wide variety of dental instruments that are used in dentistry today. Dental supply companies manufacture many variations of instruments for the purpose of accommodating personal preferences. So for instance, before they used to only have instruments for right-handed doctors. Now they have instruments for left-handed doctors. And they have instruments, oh gosh, gold and silver and uh, different colors now. I mean, of course, if they're in different colors, they're more expensive. Um, usually though, the main instruments that you will see are uh, like metal, okay? Now, instruments have instrument numbers and usually the manufacturer assigns a number to most instruments. It makes it easier for you to order it um, if you happen to need that instrument. The dentist will often refer to pliers and forceps by their number rather by their name, which in a way is kind of easier for you guys because if you don't remember the name, you just look at the number on the forceps. And if he says, give me number 23, all you gotta do is look for number 23. Now, here's the problem with that. If you guys have problem with eyesight, I suggest that you check your eyes before you go out on extern because some of these numbers are very small and um, <laughs> you don't want to be squinting and taking your time trying to find the instrument that the doctor needs just because you can't see the number. So again, it, you know, there's the, the advantages and disadvantages about it. Uh, again, it is advantage, advantageous to learn both the number and the name so that way you know. For instance, this would be inside one of the uh, instruments, okay? So as you can see here, it's number 110. If the doctor doesn't call it 110, he will call it by the Howie pliers. Most doctors that I've worked with call it by the Howie pliers. And um, so again, it's really advantageous for you to know both, okay? And once you get into the office, you'll know if they like to uh, call them by numbers or by names. Instrument design. Hand instruments are designed with three specific parts. You have the handle, which is the portion of the instrument that the operator grasps. You have the shank. It's the part of the instrument that connects the working end to the handle. And you have the working end, which is the portion of the instrument design uh, for a specific function. So yesterday, we, as I mentioned, we talked a little bit about instruments. This is the handle, of course, okay? This is the part that the doctor will grasp. You will also pass it. Make sure your hand is somewhere towards the back. The shank is in the middle here. And then the working end is the part that the doctor will use to work with it. That's why it's called the working end. Now there's what's called a black instrument formula. Uh, the black designer formula that describes the angulation and dimensions of the working end of a hand instrument, like your hand cutting and scaling instruments have three sets of numbers that identify the width of the blade, the length of the blade, and the angle of the blade. And you should have this somewhere in your Kindle, a little table. This one is table 34.1. Uh, and it'll say numbers in GV Black's instrument formulation. And it'll tell you that the first number on the instrument is the width. The second number represents the length. And the third number represents the angle of the blade. Is it really important to you as far as when you are transferring instruments? No. It's important though when you are ordering instruments. You just look at the instruments and then you can order the correct instrument for the doctor if that instrument breaks or you need some more, whatever the case may be. Now, we're gonna talk about instrument classification. We have our examination, hand cutting, restorative, and accessory. So again, there's a sequence. 
And when you set up a tray, you set it up from left to right based on how instruments are transferred and used throughout a dental procedure. The clinical assistant uses the left hand when transferring instruments. Most frequently used instruments should be placed closer to the dentist for ready availability. So here is the tray. And if you look at the tray, the first set here is called your examination. So that's your mouth mirror explorer and cotton plier. Okay. Your second set of instruments are hand cutting instruments. Okay. They can consist of anything as far as your chisel, your hatchet. Um, sometimes your spoon excavator is in there also. Uh, then the next set is your restorative. That's what you're going to use to help um, with the procedure. So here is <clears throat> the amalgam carrier, the well articulating holder and paper, cotton rolls, two by two gauze. And it's really hard, I know, to see the instruments here, but usually you have what's called the uh, plugger or condenser, the um, burnishers, there's many different burnishers, acorn, ball burnisher, uh, the T-ball, the beaver tail, and then comes your carvers, your discoid, cleoid carver, or your hollenback, okay? On occasion, you might have some more accessory, um, like your crown and bridge scissors. Um, the other thing I see that's missing on this tray is floss. We should always have floss if we need it. Um, and some other stuff, they might have the aspirating syringe somewhere on the side. So a couple of other things might be needed. Now your examining examination instruments are the most often utilized instruments on the tray. So I mentioned that every procedure should have a basic. Again, your basic setup is your mouth mirror, explorer, and your cotton pliers. Um, they are used in procedures ranging from checking a specific problem, providing a thorough oral examination, oral examination, or evaluating a restored instrument. So again, mouth mirror, explorer, and cotton pliers. Um, I'm gonna say this, uh, if you don't know these three instruments, you probably won't be working. Uh, I know some doctors that um, first day they'll ask you what the basic setup is. And if you can't identify these three instruments alone, you will not be working there because these three instruments need to be on every procedure setup. Okay. And um, we have it in the, in the lab and we use it all the time. So please make sure that, that those three instruments you know for sure. Now, what do we use the mouth mirror for? We use the mouth mirror for indirect vision. So that means that we're using the mirror to see what we can't see, mostly like the top teeth, especially. Okay. Sometimes we use it for light reflection because of course the mouth is dark. There's no light in there. So we'll use it for that. We'll use it also for retraction, whether it's for the tongue, or the cheek, okay? And uh, sometimes we use it to protect the tissue um, or the gums or the tongue from the handpiece. When the doctor is using the handpiece, the mirror might be there just in case the patient moves or it slips. It'll hit the mirror before it hits the tongue or anything else because if the burr cuts the tongue or um, the tissue, It'll bleed, of course, and make things a whole lot difficult to see. And not only that, it will hurt the patient. Of course, they might not feel it at that moment, but once the numbness goes away in that area, it will hurt. Okay, I don't know if you ever cut the t your tongue or your tissue or the roof of your mouth. It's not pleasant. So imagine a burr cutting it. Now, the next set of instruments, as I mentioned, are the hand cutting instruments. Those are manual instruments, okay? So remember, they come after the basic. And as I mentioned, they could uh, consist of your uh, excavator, your hose, your chisel, your hatchet, and even your gingival margin trimmer. 
Now, the dentist will have a preference as to what instruments they want included in this section. And you may even have a combination of rotary instruments and manual cutting instruments that interchangeably uh, you use throughout a procedure, okay? I will tell you one out of all those instruments that I mentioned, the spoon excavator is like the number one instrument that most doctors use, even us, because uh, if we have to clean a temporary or the cement off a tooth, sometimes we you can use an explorer, of course, but a spoon excavator works great also. Restorative instruments used to place, condense, and carve the restorative dental materials back to reflect the normal anatomy of the tooth. So again, I said basic, hand cutting, and now you're restorative. I keep on saying it over and over because repetition is the key for you guys to remember the sequence. Now, instruments selected for the tray setup vary, again, with the dentist's preference and the type of dental material selected for the procedure. Um, you know, on that tray that I just showed you was the amalgam uh, carrier. And again, then comes the condensers. If you look down on the bottom here, burnishers, carvers. Sometimes there's the amalgam knife. If you're gonna use any composite placement instruments, Again, look in your uh, Kindle in the procedures, it'll show you. That's another thing I want to remind you guys. If you are not reading the entire chapter, at least please read the procedures after the chapter. It'll go step by step of how the procedure should go and you guys should have an idea. So when you come back to lab, we're ready to work on stuff because lab is for lab skills. Lab is not for lecture. So just try to remember that, okay? Then the next instruments after restorative is accessory. So again, now it's your basic, hand cutting, restorative, and accessory. So accessory items are not necessarily included in the tray setup, but can be pulled from the dental cabinets or a tub to be used for many procedures or the drawer. Uh, again, accessory instruments, and I'll tell you guys too, leave them on the side just in case you don't use them because as soon as they touch anything that's contaminated, that's contaminated also. So if you, you know, if you don't need it, then it's far away from your contaminated instruments. If you do need it, it's also very easily for you to grasp and, and get it instead of you opening up drawers and things like that, okay? So again, when additional items are used for procedure, you must follow proper infection control guidelines regarding disinfection or sterilization of the item before you place it back. Now, instruments can be put in what's called a preset tray, uh, cassettes or trays, either whatever you want to call it. Hand instruments and related accessories for a given procedure are prepared, stored, and transported together. So again, if you have a procedure, sometimes just examination um, cassettes, we have those separately. Sometimes we just have one for amalgam, one for composite, one for crown and bridge, one for root canal, and one for surgical. So in this case, if you notice, this will be a small cassette, and this cassette only holds the basic. Again, mouth mirror explorer, cotton plier, and in this one, the periodontal probe, is in there too. So sometimes that's included uh, with um, oral examinations, your first time examinations, because the doctor needs to check the gums and we use the periodontal probe for that. Try to remember the word perio means gums or tissues. Now, preset restorative trays. So um, you can set up your trays and a lot of offices, um, well, they were doing this uh, before COVID. I don't know if they're still doing this now, but a lot of offices were having the trays already preset. So say for instance, uh, you were gonna do a filling. So you would have a tray and it would be clean, of course, and it would have all the clean instruments and this can be put in a big plastic, okay? And when you need it, you just take the plastic off and use it for that procedure. So the instruments are clean, they're just ready and in sequence of everything that you need. And um, 
makes life a whole lot easier, especially when things change in the office. For instance, say um, you were going to do one type of procedure and you got that trace set up and uh, things change in the office. You know, doc says, oh, I can't do a silver filling. I'm going to do a composite filling. So what you can do is switch out the trays real easy. Okay. Now, even if you didn't use the tray, but let's say you took off the plastic off of it, you would have to sterilize. Once you open it up to the air, you would have to sterilize those instruments and um, get rid of all the disposable stuff and sterilize all the instruments and start again and preset the trays, okay? And even if you happen to um, touch maybe one instrument and not the rest, you still would have to clean the tray. Now, in some cases, some offices have tubs. They look like um, your, your Tupperware tubs type of thing. And a lot of doctors use them to uh, put your supplies and dental materials for specific procedures that can be stored in a covered plastic tub within each operatory. This combination is known as the tub and tray system. So again, everything is closed for, let's say, amalgam, and then another tub for composite, and another tub for root canal, and another tub for dentures, crown and bridge, and so on and so forth. So that way, anything you need for that procedure is specifically in that tub. The only thing I don't like about the tub is that it's a hot mess. There is everything is just basically thrown in there unless they actually have the tubs which with uh, dividers and those are um, kind of hard to find and also kind of hard to keep because when you move the tub, the dividers move too. Now, there's also something called the color coding system. This is one of the most convenient and efficient ways to organize instruments and supplies for specific procedures. You put bands of the same color on those instruments. So say again, let me see. I didn't notice if these instruments had. Okay, these instruments don't have any. But I believe in your Kindle there might be a picture. But um, you would put a specific color, let's say for amalgam. So all the instruments that have a blue band on them mean that they are amalgam instruments. All instruments that have a yellow band on them, they'll be composite. All instruments that have a green band on them, they might be endo and so on and so forth, okay? Um, so that way, when you're putting instruments away, you know, oh, that's for endo, this is for amalgam, that's for composite, okay? And then the instruments that are used in um, a lot of procedures, for instance, like I can use a plastic instrument for crown and bridge, for composite, and sometimes even for amalgam, so it might actually have three colors on it, blue, yellow, and green, or whatever the colors may be, signifying that it could be used for uh, other uh, color codes. So color coding, I really like color coding because, again, when you sterilize instruments, you know what group they go in. Does all offices have that? No. Um, problems with the bands are that they break and they come off. Uh, with excessive use in the um, autoclave and ultrasonic. So you would have to uh, put the new bands on them. Now, the trays of the same colors, the trays and the tubs also have colors and colors represent different procedures. So I kind of like that. Also, if the tray is blue, maybe that tray is for amalgam. If the tray is a different color, so for instance, this tray is blue. So it could be for a specific uh, procedure. So, and the tubs, same thing, okay? Or they just label. Like when you come into the lab, one of the things that I have to tell you guys that is the most annoying thing, and it, it happens in the office too. If the tubs or what we call the lab pans in the cabinets are uh, specifically with certain instruments. So if you pull out a basic, say for instance, and you pull out a basic tub, or lab pan, and inside that basic lab pan is everything else but the basic. It's very annoying because a lot of times you will be in a procedure and you might have forgotten an instrument or you need an instrument right away. The doctor's waiting on you. And so you pull out that tub and you look in it 
and what you need is not there. It is very aggravating and annoying because you do not have the time to look at all the tubs and all the lab pants to find where that missing instrument is. That's why it's important to know your instrument, know that if they're, if it's organized in the um, office or in, the, in our operatory, in our lab, wherever, you put it back where it belongs. And if you see an instrument that doesn't belong somewhere, move it. Don't wait until you need to find it. You move it and put it in its correct position, okay? Because again, time is of an essence. Now, any questions? No, ma'am. No, ma